Praise the Lord this morning. Good morning to each and every one today. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Why? Everyone stand for the lesson of the choir. Thank you, Lord. Ninety-seven. Hymn of praise coming from. Uh, excuse me. Page ninety-seven.
Good morning, Second Baptist Church. Good morning, Second Baptist Church. As we prepare our hearts and minds to go to God's throne of grace, we want to be able to pray for Sister Wesley and her family. Is she here? Yes. yes. Amen. Let's hear. All right. Okay. We. Last week, her brother, was struggling with his life, but now we know he's gone to be with his maker, his God, our God. So, Mr. Lawrence Brown, Jr., will be funeralized September 6th. to remember or read the information is a progressive Baptist church 2945 bills here in Kansas City, Missouri Visitation 9 to 11 a.m. Followed by the services. We also want to lift up the family of Linda, Ms. Linda, Linda Wilson passed. She was the sister-in-law of Sister Mary Avery. Funeral was held last week. Amen. We thank God that Sister Shirley Redmond is here. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and many, many others who may have visited the hospital, were in the hospital, been released. But we cannot forget many who are in the shortened nursing home and convalescent homes and even at home. Sister Alice Bailey, Brother Bernard Betty, Brother Eddie Bell, Sister Essie. Bailey is here. Amen. Amen. Sister Essie Beto, Deacon Charles Davis, we receive word he has been transferred to Warrensburg. Amen. Sister Daughter Davis. She's here. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Sister Nan Jackson. Sister Mayola McFeders. Sister Linda Ransom. Sister Frances Russell. Brother Willie Sims. Sister Geraldine Souls. Sister Betty Story. Sister Marva Thompson, or Thomas, Brother Naaman Thompson, Brother Gregory Walker, Sister Patricia Washington, Sister Ruth Welsh, 
Sister Doris Wharton, Sister Arlene Williams, Brother Arthur Williams, Sister Veronica Osbury Williams, Amen. 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 Sister Frida M. Wright. Amen. And any other and all others that we may not have called their names and all their key caregivers. Amen. Amen. They are very important to us. They are very important to Jesus Christ. We want to lift up our community of Kansas City. It seems like we are just marching forward to surpass all killings from previous years. Every morning there's killing here, there's killing there. All over the United States. We want to lift up the families that are mourning all across these are great communities. And of course, we must not forget those who were minding their business yesterday in Texas, only to be more down. I don't know what is going on. Marvin Gaye asked what's going on. We should be asking what's going on. We should be asking our new mayor, I asked him what's going on. All our city council and all those striving to be elected into positions in this country, what's going on? But I know a man upstairs, his name is Jesus. He's the one asking us to come to the altar right now. He's the one we are going to pray to and surrender everything to. He's the one with all power. He's the one with all grace. Will you come to the altar? He still got the power and we must pray unto him to have mercy upon us. We must lift up his name. In the end, he cares and still cares. Will you stand if you don't feel like coming to the altar? Grab somebody's hand. If you able, please stand. Grab somebody's hand. It's not good for man to stand alone in times like this. It's not good for a woman to stand alone in, st in times such as this. Let us pray. Most merciful and our eternal God, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Father, we stand with you right now, lifting up your holy name. Your name is Jesus the Christ. Your name is Jesus the Christ. It is in your name and on your name that we stand right now. Saying, God, have mercy upon each one of us. Saying, Lord, please forgive us. Saying, God, please help us in times such as this. Saying, God, please. Remember us. Remember our church. Remember our houses, our homes, our families. Keep us protected. Keep us safe. 
Remember Great Kansas City. Remember all churches that are opening your name. Remember all that knows you. Remember those that don't know you for the pardon of their sins. Father, right now, we've asked the question, what is going on? We've asked the question, when will this stop? We've asked the question, Lord, please forgive us. We can hide no more. We can lie no more. We can claim to be righteous no more. We don't know why these things are happening. But thank you for opening your arm. Opening your heaven's window. Just so that we can say have mercy right now. So that we can say have mercy on Second Baptist Church. Have mercy, O oh Lord. Father Almighty, we have called other names. We have called our members' names. Those who have served you for many, many years. Those who are weak due to age and illnesses. Those who are not able to come. Those who are being cared for by caregivers and other professionals. Father, have mercy. Reach out and touch them wherever they may be. For they are still your children. They are still your servants. They are still the one who is saying, Lord, I still believe. For there is only one God. Oh, merciful God. Let your spirit fall afresh on us right now. Let each person here be re-anointed. We need double portions of your anointing, of your spirit, of your glory right now. We need you. We need triple portions. In the name of Jesus. We need our sins cleansed. We need our spirit. We need our sins forgiven right now. We know this is your choice. This is your people. All those who are serving right now, not only here, but those trying to make this world a better place. Let your spirit let your anointing, let your glory, let your love, let your care yes. fall on us. In the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. Father, we will be very careful to call on your righteous name. Yes, Not only when we are here, yes, but wherever we go, Hallelujah. we want to take you with yes. us. We want to take you with us. We want to take you with us. For you are the God of the universe. You the creator of the universe. You the sustainer of this great world that we live in. Even as people on the coast prepare for another hurricane. For we know that season for everything. May you keep us safe, even through the coast, through the islands, yes. through everywhere. Yes, Thank you. We extend our hands in glory right now. We extend our hearts in righteousness right now. And in the end, we stand here receiving your glory. For that glory led you to the cross of Calvary. That glory led you to die for our sins. That glory led you to be buried. But on that third day you got up with all power. 
We need some of that power right now. For we don't know where to run to but to God. And Father, after we have done what we can do right now, after we have prayed, we will stand to receive more blessings, more security, because knowing you are God, and you are God by yourself, there's none like you. There's never, never going to be one like you. Father, hear our prayers in the name of Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, we say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Mother Talbot, if you have never prayed before, God wants you to pray right now. All right, all right. Amen. 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 Let's settle down in the spirit of worship. Even as we go to God in prayer. Father. Father, we have shared in an experience that touches all of our hearts. But we come to you now, Lord, seeking thy blessing seeking thy healing touch, seeking thy Holy Spirit comforter. 
We ask that comforter to come right now, Lord, to be not only in our presence, but to be with Sister Franklin, to comfort her spirit as she goes to be examined and to be checked out. And Father, we know that because of the blood that you shed on Calvary, yes. we can be healed and made whole. Yes. And so we call on that blood, that precious blood. We call on that blood each and every day as it nurtures us, as it heals us, as it protects us, Lord, from the enemy who's walking about seeking who he can destroy by any means possible. And so, Father, as we come, we lift up this concern to you, to only you, Lord. For none of us can do more than examine and check and monitor, and we can pray. And that in itself is the most powerful weapon we can use right now. And I know that every one of us have already bowed our heads and said a prayer. And so we're just adding on to those prayers, Lord. Seeking, knocking, asking, knowing that you will answer in your time and in your way, as only you can answer, Lord. And so we just trust her well-being to you, Father, as we do each and every day our own selves. And we know, Lord, that thy will will be done with Sister Franklin on this earth as it is already done in heaven. And it is in Jesus' name that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. God is good. God is good. And all the time. To uh, Reverend Kalu and the pulpit and my SPC family, good morning. Um, I did not register any visitors this morning, but there, if there are any in our congregation, would you please stand at this time? Well, on this first day of September and on this beautiful first Sunday, it is always a privilege to worship together in spirit and in truth and we know the collective prayers of the righteous 
avail us so much. As we have seen today, our, our sisters, she's going to be okay. Amen. Um, have a good day and a wonderful weekend, or Labor Day, or tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Amen. Because of the miracle God just wrought in this place. Because of the glory that we have witnessed. Let's get up and just thank God for each other and for his miracles. Already received and one yet to be received.
Amen. Amen. Sister Riley, please come and make your announcement about Women's Day. I have to say good morning to the Father, yeah. first and foremost for his presence this morning. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> I'm going to dedicate this to Sister Mary Franklin, one of our strong women of the church. Amen. I'm here to tell you about Women's Day. Mm -hmm. Women, it's our day to take over. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, our Amen. annual Women's Day is coming up September 15th. Our theme is fear, and it comes from 2 Timothy 1 and 7. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Our guest for the day will be Reverend Marsha Perkins, the Associate Minister of Metropolitan Missionary Baptist Church. She will bring the message. The music will be rendered by our Women's Day Choir under the leadership of Charles Withers, but under the guest directorship of Cammie Woodward. Now, ladies, I need you to show up and show out. I want you to invite a friend. We are having our annual salad dinner. We usually have like a salad tea, but it's going to be a dinner, so to speak. All we're asking of the ladies is to bring your favorite dessert or salad. You can show off your cooking skills. Those that don't want to participate, we ask that you give a soft donation to Sister Gail Bass, who will take care of the, the finances for us. Um, we will have a spirit-filled worship service with our Women's Day Choir. We will have praise dancing. And then after we've been spiritually filled, we're asking you to stay with us and go downstairs and have dinner with us. Um, have I missed anything? I think I've got it all. We want you to be here. Bring a friend. God bless. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Riley. The women are willing to take over. The women always have their acts together and the men are coming up, amen. We encourage you to please read your bulletin and again, take note of all the events coming up at Springfield on the back of this your program, amen. We want you to be aware that this church needs to be cleaned. Amen? Amen. <coughs> Cleanliness is next to godliness. Mm -hmm. You have been given a day to come out all church-wide cleaning. We encourage you to come out Seventh of the month, next Saturday. Amen? Yeah. If anybody brings hot dog, even though where I come from, we don't eat dog. <laughs> but if your hot dog is good, I might just taste it. So come out ready to clean God's house. We have, I have been asked to remind the membership that last, this past June homecoming committee encouraged us, urged us to give $500 each person above and beyond your tithes and offerings in commemoration of homecoming. Because of that, we decided this year for the anniversary 
we are not going to task you any more, but encourage you to be faithful and try to give you 500 by the time December rolls around. Amen? Amen. So if you have not made that commitment, try you have time between now and December 15th to meet that. Don't go to Branson and give them all your money. <laughs> Don't go to any other place, but try and give God first. Amen? Another thing we want you to be aware of is that tomorrow is Labor Day. We want you to be safe, drive carefully, stay away from the lakes, enjoy yourselves. The city is reminding us that Tuesday is the last day for those that wishes to uh, say something about their, what's that called? Tax, uh, property taxes. Please take care of that. You can go online and do that. We have to remind us that we must continue to visit our sick and shutting. Send them a card, send them a postcard, add one dollar or two to it like Dr. Chappelle always does, and like you've been doing. We want you to continue to lift up God's children, those who have not been able to come, and you'll be the one to receive the blessing and blessings. Amen. Last but not the least, we have a special mom here celebrating her 98th birthday. I don't know if she is able to stand so that we can see her looking beautiful, 98 years old. Through dangers, toils, and snares, I have already gone. So let me give you a brief testimony. I've had two heart attacks, a stroke, operation on my knee, operation on my CP, vertebrae in my neck. I've gone through bankruptcy, foreclosure, job layout. Have I said enough? Thank you for bringing me through this. Thank you for bringing me 
They blocking people in the middle of the street, telling them to pull over if you need prayer. All kind of stuff. So, you know, I had to go up there. I drove on up there. And they said, oh, she go to our school. <laughs> she know? But they prayed. They circled around me and prayed too. So, you know, you can't have enough prayer. God is so good. Thank you. And he's worthy to be praised. In front of you, you will find an envelope. And you can still give to the homecoming. Because I did. Every, every two weeks, I put my little change. But it says homecoming. So we can still do that as well in the name of Jesus. So we have on our left, we have the tide box. I'm just delaying, so I'm hearing checkbooks and I'm put, hearing money coming out. So, you know, <laughs> glory be to God. It is a blessing to be here today. Let us go to God in prayer. Good morning, your Heavenly Father, first and foremost. We want to give you all the glory yes. and all the praise. Yes. You are a healer. Mm. You are a deliverer. Yes. You are a way maker. Yes. You are a doctor. Yes. You are a lawyer. Yes. You are everything we need, oh God. You are a friend. You are, you are a father to us, oh God. You touch us and you help us in our darkest times. And you help us when we're okay, Lord. You just woo, awesome. Thank you for all you've done for us. Let us give back to you a portion that you gave it to us. And just watch over SBC's finances. Touch everyone's heart, mind, soul, and spirit. Touch their finances today. Their health and their strength. In your holy name, we give you glory. We give you praise. Amen, amen, and amen. Bring you all the tithes. Please come forth.
looked up in the back. I saw another miracle from God. The little TV that used to be there grew. <laughs> Hallelujah. One of our members, humble members, a judge, <laughs> I'm sorry, <coughs> donated that TV. Amen. We say thank you. He can't sue me. I haven't called his name. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Perhaps you will see things that need to be done. I remember when the rent is donated that clock. But I don't want to start calling names. But this is our church. And God bless you, the fact that you are here. God bless you to witness the miracle of healing that we received this morning. Maybe you were praying. Maybe you called 911. Whatever you did, God saw you. I seen you. The church sees you. Perhaps you brought the defibrillator or whatever. But God knows that he's blessed many men and women with medical skills. We thank you, our nurses, for taking charge. That's why he wants us to come together. Yes. Imagine if she had not come to worship our God. Imagine. Pays to come to church to worship. It's not about colors clothes. It's not about deacons or ushers or anybody or trustees. It's about God. Our September prayer focus is printed for you. Humility, peace, patience, speaking softly, praise, 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 praise. Let us pray. <clears throat> to God be the glory of the day. Amen. To God be the glory of the hour. To God be the glory of the minutes. Every second belongs to you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we lift up each person that is here. Father, we lift up your glory. We lift up your name. Your name is Jesus the Christ. You are God of Abraham. God of Isaac. God of Jacob. God of Second Baptist Church. Have mercy on us. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. The choir will sing.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians. Thank you, Brother Murray. Brother Murray will sneak in in here. He will make sure he, he gives me or somebody his tithes to put in the offering plate for him. Thank you for being here. God bless you, sir. If you have your Bibles, as you stand, let's look at God, uh, John's Gospel. God, gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. John. John, chapter 3, verse 1. May we stand for the reading of the gospel. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot Enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Let us pray. Merciful God, praise be unto you for showing yourself at Second Baptist Church. Thank you for reminding us that you are a spirit. We cannot see the spirit, but you do show up on time. You did show up here. Father, as we meditate over these words, may your spirit open the doors of our hearts, and may our hearts be receptive unto you. I have prayed in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the special, special, special Holy Spirit. We all say, Amen. 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 In this passage of scripture, we see Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews, a member of the Pharisee, we see in this passage a conversation between Jesus and Nicodemus. Have you had conversation with God? Have you had conversation recently with God? We also see in this passage Nicodemus 
went to Jesus by night. When was the last time you visited with Jesus at night? We see in this passage, verses 1 to 6, that Jesus used the word assured, assuredly. He appeared twice, and the kingdom of God also appeared twice. We see in this passage that Nicodemus went to Jesus. He did not say, I know that you are a teacher come from God. He said, we. It's good to go to Jesus and say, I, and use the word I. So, though a ruler of the Jews, though a Pharisee, he still lacks something. So, in this 45 minutes sermon, 45 minutes, that's the way the Spirit led. God, the Spirit just revealed himself to us. His healing grace. His power. But if you say some amen, I may not take that long because we have to observe the communion. Amen. Only two people. It's all right. Amen. This morning, I will speak on the subject, real talk with Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Real talk with Jesus. I know we have uh, many persons in our lives in a circle of influence, circle of fear, circle of uh, circle of friends that we talk to. Every talk we have with our BF. BFF, is that how you say it? It's not real. Some of them are gossip. And we are good at it. But Nicodemus had something in his mind to enable him to go to talk to Jesus. We know during Christ's earthly ministry, there were Many groups, Republicans, Democrats, Independents, and many, many Green Party, Libertarian, and so forth. But he was a member of the Pharisees. They have had their group encounters with Jesus. But something was bothering Nicodemus. He did not want to be egg, what's the word, excommunicated from the group. He said to himself, I will go visit with Jesus at night. I don't know what you do when you can't sleep. I don't know what you watch on television. I don't know what or which bar you go to. I used to go, which is in Brew. Told you how many trophies I won dancing, my silly dances. But at midnight, they would shut everywhere and we will go on home. Some, want, some will go on to other places, other bars. Why are you looking at me as if I'm the only one who ever been to a bar? I've seen some of you, I, I just didn't greet you. I've seen some of you, I may just not be in suit. I may have been in my African regalia, incognito. 
Don't look at me as if I'm the only one who ever visited. But this is a serious matter with Nicodemus. He decided to go at night. I don't know what you do when you can't sleep at night. Pop in your favorite video. Turn on to your favorite channel. Turn on to your favorite movie. All relearning how to do the two steps. But something was bothering brother Nico. Maybe he went there thinking that Christ was asleep or in deep sleep that he will not be able to engage in conversation. But he went there. And what did he say? Maybe try to trick Christ. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, meaning teacher, we know how wonderful that we would have been if he used the word I know. We know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do, that you did, that you did this morning, Jesus, unless God is with him. Jesus answered, more, answered him and said, most assuredly, I said to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, this is where that talk with Jesus continued. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered him again, said, most assuredly. This is serious conversation. I say to you, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he, she cannot enter the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is the spirit. Point number one. Recognize you need Jesus. We sing that Jesus is on the main line. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him. Tell him what you want. That song is not just there for show or for form, Dick and Parker. It is real. Tell him what you want. You can go in the morning to him. You can go all midday. You can go in the afternoon, evening, at night, midnight, anytime. Call on him. You need him. I need him. As a Pharisee, we know the Pharisees are noted as persons or group of persons that honored so highly the laws of Moses. We know that the Pharisees are Jewish Rulers and they welded some political powers. 
The Pharisees believed much on oral tradition. Nicodemus was one of them. The Pharisees believed in the resurrection of the dead or life after death, among other things. But Jesus was ready for him. He may not give you what you go to ask for, but he will give you what you need. Amen? Amen. Go to Jesus anytime. He's waiting for you. The second point that we want to, to have right now is that you must recognize that you need the word. Jesus is the word. We were not told reasons why Nicodemus went to see Jesus. Let me just fantasize on certain things. Maybe he was feeling depressed. Thank you. Have you ever been depressed? Have you ever felt depressed that you don't know which way to turn? Maybe he was despaired, feeling despaired. Maybe, maybe he was feeling despondent. He was feeling discouraged. He was feeling defeated, dejected, hopeless, suicidal, was having suicidal ideation, meaning he was thinking of killing himself because he realized he belonged to the wrong party. <laughs> this election season, you all. Maybe he's had some suicide attempts. Maybe sleeplessness was also there. Was feeling, having some headache. Gloom and doom. Disgusted with everything. Thank you, Lord. His body was so large. His worries and fears and his dreads, apprehension, nervousness, tension, broken-hearted, addicted, restless. But Jesus surprised him. Not only was Jesus at work, but Jesus is always open for business. Amen? If you don't believe me, try him. Try Jesus. So whatever Nicodemus may be feeling, may have been feeling, he went to Jesus. Let's go to Jesus. Let's go to Jesus. Tell him all about it. Don't keep them bottled up. Because Jesus is God. Jesus is a spirit. Or oh, Nicodemus may not have remembered what was written in Luke chapter 9, verse 35. When a voice came from heaven or the clouds and said to us, This is my beloved son, hear ye him. Whatever made him go? Oh. Whatever may not have made us to go. I want you all to remember that Jesus 
is immortal. He is an invisible God. He is God only wise, in, in light, inaccessible. Hid from our eyes, but he will show up and do his thing and go on. He is almighty, victorious, thy great name we pray. That's, that's a song. Immortal. Invisible. God is only wise. In light as inaccessible. Heed from our eyes. Almighty, victorious. Thy great name we pray. Great name we praise to. We pray to. We adore. We lift up. Thank you. Unresting. Unhasting. The silent, his silent as night. Not wanting, not wasting, he ruleth in might. His justice is like mountains, high and soaring above. He changeth not. He is the great father of glory. Oh, help us to see this Jesus. He is most blessed, most glorious. He is my our ancient of days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Almighty victorious, thy name we pray. Maybe Nicodemus may have remembered as we should never forget that great is God's faithfulness. O oh God, our Father, there is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not. Can you think of Dr. E. e. Chappelle? Thou changest not. Thy compassion they fail not. As Jesus has been, from the beginning, so he is today. So as we preach him, as I preach him, as our hearts expand for what he just came and did. I want us to remember that he gives us new mercies every day, every night. He's the one that broke the chains at midnight while Peter and his apost fellow apostles were praying in prison. He's the one that protects each one of us. He's the one that protects me. Unless God protects his people, they that protect do so in vain. You should try to go and live in Nigeria where you would dial 911. They would say, do you have a car you can come and get me with? This is a police officer. Mm -hmm. Thank God for America. Mm -hmm. Thank God for America. Thank God. He took the ambulance how many minutes to get here? If we were in Nigeria, we'd still be waiting. <laughs> so somebody may have picked up sister... Franklin, in her, uh, uh, and put her on their chest to take them to, her to the car or to the motorcycle. Wedge him, her between the driver of the motorcycle and somebody sitting behind her to keep her. Yet, that's a country flowing with milk and oil. God have mercy. I appreciate what you have in America and I appreciate what you have in Jesus Christ. May his name forever be praised. Amen? Amen. 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 Nicodemus was clever enough to go have a little talk or real talk with Jesus. 
We must be prepared to have real talk with Jesus. And let's tell him all about it. Then, the conversation took a little like the hurricane. Sometimes it's going this way, it's going that way, it's going that way. But Jesus helped Nicodemus to know that he must be born again. Like Nicodemus, we must be born again. Amen? Amen. We must be born again. And what does it mean? It means that we are not all that. When we go to Jesus, we must not go with our lies. We must not go with our pumped up chest. We must not try to do a number on him. Oh, you are a great teacher. You have done all these miracles. We, we, we go to Jesus and say, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know that you are the son of the living God. You are a miracle worker. You a healer? You are all that I ever needed. So, there are many ways we must be born again. Being born again means that you really, really, really know that you are the child of the great master, the great rabbi, the great teacher, the great counselor, the holy one, Jesus Christ. Don't go with grandma's certificate. Don't go with grandpa's certificate. Go with your own. Go and say, I know, I know that you are Jesus, the Christ. So we have talked about recognizing you need Jesus. We've talked about recognizing you need the word. Because Jesus is the word. The third point I want to make is to use the word. Using the word means there are different things we have for you. Dick and Renty is always reminding folk, come to Sunday school. Come to Bible study. Just look at the bulletin. There are different times, different hours. Even though the afternoon one run by Sister McMullen will not take place this month of September, join another one until the end of September. Amen? Come to Sunday school. Reverend Brazil, send your children to Sunday school. The other day, this altar was filled because we had a christening for a young boy, a, a baby boy. Where are those family members? Before these services was over, they have evacuated that section. Worship is more important than bringing a child here to be christened. Do you have a, an infant in your home that is overdue for infant baptism? Do you have a relative that is ready to be baptized? Do you? 
When are you going to bring them to God? When are you going to present them to be Christian? Amen? Amen? I got a few more minutes. <laughs> yes, as Baptists, we must be baptized in the water or we must be dunked. But for the rest of our lives, we must completely have that full rebirth. It's not enough that you were born again 100 years ago, or 60 years ago, or one year ago, or one, one day ago. Jesus wants us to be baptized in the spirit of the living God. In other words, as you move around, God resides inside you. That is what is called rebirth. His word is hidden inside you so that you might not sin against God. <coughs> God wants to see us fully blossom as persons who have experienced his love, his mercy, his healing. God wants us to silently and sacredly come to him. No, any time, day, night, any time, call upon him, yeah. and he will answer you. Yeah. He answered Nicodemus. Yes, he God wants us, as I close this message, he wants us to remind ourselves, to remember what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is in his or she is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. I looked at my hand, they look new. I look at my eyes, they look new. I looked at all over me. I may not be as fast or run or catch the ball or play soccer or run trial like I used to do. But I'm new in the name of Jesus Christ. I am new. You are new. Now I am determined to use myself to work and serve my living Savior. So then, he did not have to spare me from the accident of my drum being rang, my chest being crushed by the uh, contusion. But I'm here. You are here. We all are here. We are here because nobody can do us like Jesus. We have Jesus. He loves us. He's given us a rebirth, born again. Yeah. He's made us to re remain new. Why then must we not serve him? Why not must we not shout for him? Why? Because it is for a man to live for just a few years. But we know not the day or the hour will be called home. God who made the world and everything in it is waiting in the morning every time for us to come to him, for us to come back to him, for us to serve him, for us to do everything. Because believe it or not, you have Jesus. That's better than billions. For a person who do not know Jesus. You know Jesus. You need Jesus. I need Jesus. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. He does not live or dwell in houses made of hand. He lives in heaven. But he's everywhere at all times. 
Nicodemus, brother Nico, had sent to go to him. When will you go to him? When was the last time you had a real talk with Jesus? When was the last time you said, Jesus, I am sorry. I'm sorry about all the mask I've been wearing, layer after layer. Here I am. Take me back. We beg our relations to take us back more than we beg Jesus. We wouldn't eat, we wouldn't drink, we wouldn't sleep. When someone tells us, I'm true with you, don't call me no more. But we rarely go to Jesus to get on our knees to beg him to please forgive us and take us back. Jesus, he never sleeps. He never sleeps. That's why. With all his power, he went to that cross of Calvary. Yes, he did. With all his power, he gave himself. Yes, he With all his power, indeed, he died. He died yeah. so that I can have life. I can have life more eternal. Yeah. He died. He made us a new creature. He died. He is the bread of life. He is all things. We are to seek him. We are to find him. Yeah. We are to reach out to him. Yeah. We are to say, my way was not good enough. Please make me whole. We are to say, Lord, for in you I move. In you I live. In you I have my being. Acts 17, 28, uh, 24 through 28. Now that we've been reborn, we've been reborn. We don't know what Nicodemus did. We don't know how far he took advantage of his talks with Jesus. But today, we must return to Christ. For he is the Alpha. Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. Let's have real talk with Jesus. Let's tell him all about it. And I know. 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 I know that he will not let us down. He, Jesus Christ. Our Lord and Savior is open for business. Go to him. Yeah. In the name of God the Father, yeah. God the Son, and God the precious Holy Ghost. Amen. His people say, Amen. Amen. We open the doors of God's church right now. For him to let us in. There may not be a visitor this morning. But somebody here might be ready to come back to Jesus. To let Jesus take over. To let Jesus take control. Total control. The doors are open. Is there someone?
you may not be sure who you visited with last night. Make sure it's Jesus this morning. He's your God. He's your Father. He's my Father. He's our Father. Abba. Yes. Will you come? Turning back. No turning back, no going back. We want the choir to please come down. You can grab your purse later. Just come on down. We don't want to see any bag lady or bag man. All right, please, that way our deacons will be able to effectively help us with this communion. Amen? Amen. Let's give the choir a big hand. Amen. 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 Reverend Callahan, please come join us up here so that we can partake of this communion together. Since we are all in here, no guests, but just in case somebody slipped in while we were worshiping. We have an open communion here in Second Baptist Church because in the end it's between you and your God. It's between you and Jesus Christ that you can go and talk to and get your marching orders how to be born again. So we will have Reverend Brazil to read the covenant and Reverend Blackman will lead us in consecrating these elements. Can we please stand to read the covenant, the church covenant? Having been led as we believe 
by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, we do now in the presence of God and his angels most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. Congregation. To strive for the advancement of the church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort. To sustain its worship, ordinance, discipline, and doctrines. To continue cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, the expenses of the church, the relief of the poor, and the spread of the gospel through all nations. To religiously educate our children. To walk circumspectly in the world. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excess anger. We further engage to watch over one another in brotherly and sisterly love. Remember each other in prayer. To aid each other in sickness and distress. Both and sympathy and feeling, to be slow to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior to secure it without delay. All. That when we move from this place, we as soon as possible unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of covenant and the principle of God's word. Amen. Whom did any soul today if I to go? If I had walked in on willful way, dear Lord, forgive Most gracious Father in heaven, we just thank you for this opportunity to reflect, to remember, to celebrate our, son, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, giving himself as a perfect sacrifice for all of our sins and all of our iniquities. Father, we just thank you. We just can't say thank you enough. So, Lord, as we take this time now to celebrate, hallelujah, his death, burial, and resurrection. Father, we ask your blessings over the bread, representing his broken body. We ask your blessings over the wine that represents the blood that he shed. Hallelujah. And we're thankful, oh God. Father, we know, hallelujah, that we cannot do anything without that blood. Smite each of us, O oh God, with that precious blood of Jesus on today. That as we go out and go forth, hallelujah, to do what you have purposed and ordained in our individual lives to do. Consecrate us. Consecrate us by your spirit. In the precious name of Jesus, we pray. And we count it all done in his name. Amen. Amen.
Indeed, he died on the cross for me, for you. He died. He died. We want to make sure, because of the significance of this meal, that we have not omitted anybody. Amen? On that eve... Before he was betrayed, with his full cast of apostles, disciples, the scripture tells us that he took the bread. After giving thanks, he passed it around for his disciples to share, to enjoy. He said, this is my broken body. You eat in remembrance of him. Likewise, the scripture tells us, he took that precious bottle, that wine, which Usually was a part of a regular meal. But he made sure that they remember because he is God. He reminded them that this represents his blood yet to be shed. They may, un they may not understand it, but we do because that is why we do it. We drink in remembrance of him. Let's drink together. Amen? Amen. We have two members who have completed their new membership class. One is not really a member, but he chose to join with his significant other as they went through the new membership class. Here is our leader in that department to tell us 
their names. Let us welcome Sister Tracy Kopp and Brother Al Williams, if they would come forth. To ex we will extend the right hand of fellowship at this time in which we, we uh, celebrate our, the broken body and the blood that was shed. As we remember, we welcome. Now, Brother Al is already a member, as, as, Reverend, uh, as Reverend Kalu has shared, but he attended new member orientation faithfully each Sunday. If you come through the Sunday, if you come through the auditorium on a Sunday morning, you would see him with us. So we praise God for him, and we want us to celebrate him and what he has done as well. So, and, uh, upon the leading of Reverend Kalu, we will celebrate both of them. Amen. What a fellowship. 